everyone. Welcome to Game Set Chat. So happy you are joining us today. We have a very special show. We will have a special guest, Serena Williams, will be joining us. Plus, we will be talking about the 30 year anniversary of Zena Garrison's historic run to the Wimbledon final. Zena, can you believe it's been 30 years? <laughs> no, I cannot believe 30 years. I mean, 30 years has gone by so fast, but it's been an amazing just run going back and all what's happened in 30 years ago. I'm so excited to introduce our next guest. Um, it's been fantastic watching her over the course of her career. She really needs no introduction. So I'm just going to go right ahead and say, come on in, Serena Williams. Just watching you, how you've done at Wimbledon. This is a special show for me because I, I want it, as I've mentioned, to celebrate Zena, to celebrate the 30 year anniversary of her run to the Wimbledon final and the connotation of that, what she was up against. It had been not since Althea Gibson that a black woman had made it to the, to the finals of Wimbledon. She was the first in the open era. You of course have followed in her footsteps and, and up the ante, but you know, I wanna talk to both of you guys about Wimbledon and how special it is. And for those of our viewers who maybe aren't as familiar, it's probably arguably the biggest tennis tournament in the world with the most history yeah. um, for a lot of people, uh, if, if you think about it. And, you know, for what you guys have done, first you, Zena, yeah, I, I want to ask you, what did that feel like, especially going into the tournament? You talked about <laughs> maybe not feeling as great, thinking about quitting, thinking about retirement. How did you turn yeah. things around and get through and have that big of a run? Well, I think that's an understatement to say not feeling great. I could not see the ball at all. I mean, uh, for one entire week, it was just like I was playing the worst tennis that I had ever played in my entire life. And I truly thought about quitting, but I had put so much effort and time into it. I actually had a sports therapist there with me that was, um, and I thought about that. I, I watched the match the other day against Monica Sellis and um so for me, I just knew that I had to like. That was the quarterfinals, right? Yes, it was the quarterfinals. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I actually hit that forehand on a, on a on a match point. Is that's what I went to the sports therapist for because I had missed it so many times over again. <laughs> yeah. Well, that well, paid off. We had really because uh, we were in Compton, obviously, and I remember we would. Uh, it was great because we would practice early and then we would go home and we would watch the, the Wimbledon and we would watch you and then we would have to go back to practice. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really an iconic moment for myself and my sister and really for all the tennis, especially for people that were black and that were trying to, you know, do something different. But it was just, it was so cool. Well, I think Serena, you would have been about eight at that time, I think when 1990, Right. So I, it's yeah. a, little, a few years ago, thinking back, I remember for me, <laughs> no, <baby>. um, <laughs> not, I mean, I wasn't quite a baby. I was a little bit older. Um, I remember for me, I, I had not turned pro yet, but I had started playing some pro events. I would turn pro in 1991. But around that time, Zena, after your I think it was after your Wimbledon run, I actually went to Houston to hit with you to spend some time at McGregor Park, ran the Bayou. You kind of took me in. I mean, you guys, you and Lori were already in the thick of it, training hard. I was kind of like maybe an annoyance. But you guys took no. me in, showed me the ropes a little bit, taught me a lesson, Serena, around the bayou. But I remember that so clearly because it, for me, it was so inspirational with you coming off of that run. The people that you beat. I mean, you talk about Monica Sellis being down match point and coming up with a huge shot, beating Steffi. Graf, who I think hadn't lost for like three years in the semifinals um, before. So it was just incredible for me to interact with you in those circumstances. Yeah, it was actually really special. And, um, you know, I, I, I remember both of you guys meeting you very, very young. I remember the very first time I actually saw Serena. She doesn't even know this, but it was at an exhibition. Um, I think it was Nancy Reagan or someone had just say no. Yeah. Exhibition. Yeah, and they, well, you guys were like eight and seven or something, and we were uh, so Cassell, yeah, Rosie Cassell ran over and she's like, "Zena, I want you to see these two girls play, you know, two black girls play." And I remember running over, and Serena was just a little bit um, over the net, and she was pumping her fish. Yes, and I was like, "Who is that?" <laughs> <laughs> and you were, who told you to poach at that age? 
I don't know. I, I don't know. I was a good, I was, I am a good poacher and double sometimes too much. I just, I think it was my dad. He always just, cause we, uh, we used to play doubles when we were younger, which is rare. I think for kids at that age to actually play doubles. So we play doubles mostly in practice and just around the community with other people at the parks. But, um, it was wild because it was like, I don't know. He would always tell us to go get the ball. I remember when he would always say, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. I remember one time Venus was so like mad at him saying that, <laughs> that she took the, the guy served and she, and I, she, the guy was serving to me on the forehand side. I've always played the forehand side my whole life. The guy was serving and she crossed and, and hit the volley off the serve. <laughs> I remember my dad said, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. But he's like, you told us to go get the ball. And so he said, if you can get all the balls, it's not the serve. (laughs) So it was definitely my dad that um, was like, be aggressive at the net, um, at least in doubles. (laughs) <laughs> well, Still working on I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, for sure. You think about the doubles being an all around player and kind of using that skill set, you know, Zena, you as well. And and I think about the first time, Serena, you won your first major. That was what, eight years after Zena's run. Zena, do you kind of remember what you thought when you saw Serena? And, and I'm trying to I'm trying to understand, Serena, if you think about that now, your first major if you had to explain like to your daughter, she was a little bit older, you had to tell her what that was like, what you were feeling during those moments. How would you describe that? I remember seeing it, but I, I'm yeah. curious. I just knew I was gonna win that year and I can't explain it. Mm-hmm. I knew before I got there, I told myself I was gonna win. It was my time and I just was, I just felt it. I was like, I'm gonna win everything leading up to that. I remember I didn't play um, San Diego that year. Um, but I remember being there with Venus. I may have played doubles there. And um, I just, I think I may have won Los Angeles that year when there was a tournament in Los Angeles. And yeah, um, yeah I just remember thinking this is because I finally beaten Martina Hingis. We would, she would beat me three times and I would beat her three times in a row. And so I think the U.S. Open was like the second or third win in a row. And I was like, okay, everything is stacked for me to win this in the final. Um, but just in general, like going into that tournament, I just... From day one, I just had this sick, sick feeling that I was six, like this instinct that I was going to win. It's just weird. That's incredible. No, it's and interesting. I've never had for... that so, so exact feeling like that. I've feeling. had like things like I'm comfortable and I'm confident and I'm good enough, but I've never had just this instinct that I'm going to like win like that. And that was for your first one. You, you had that feeling. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Now, I'm, I'm curious because we, we talk about Wimbledon, you know, both of you guys know those courts so, so well. But, you know, Zena, I think back to when you won, when you got to, the, to that final, when you won against Monica, then you won against Steffi. You did not have a clothing contract. No. So you played with, uh, you played with Martina Navratilova's clothes and you would eventually beat her in the final. What what was that like? <clears throat> First of all, not being able to get a contract when you had been top 10, you'd gotten a four in the world, had had an incredible career for years already, and players who hadn't had your results in your resume had contracts, had sponsors yeah. uh, clothing-wise. What was what was that like? How did that affect your mindset? Well, actually, I, for, um, I've had my first contract was actually with Pony, and then... Um, I was told that I wasn't blue eyed and um, I didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes. And so they gave the contract to someone else. So I literally Ooh. just, um, we won't say. <laughs> Can you text it to me? I'll send you an article. <laughs> but anyway, um, so no, actually, it was supposed to be Helena Sikova, who's actually who it was supposed to be. But um, so the thing about that is, Chandra, I just decided then that wasn't anybody going to stop me. I was just going to let my racket do the work and um, just keep, you know, plugging away. I had no idea that was going to take five years. But the great thing about it was um, Martina asked me if I wanted to wear clothes at Wimbledon. So I said, OK, fine. I didn't have a clothing deal. So, yeah, that's but, incredible. Yeah, and I just want to say, though, Serena, I've always admired the way that you um just kind of gone ahead and played even when you weren't getting, you know, you won five Wimbledons and you won all these titles and everything and you still hadn't, I don't know if you remember this, she came up to me at um, 
I was sitting down at the U.S. Open. He said, Zena, guess what? I got my first Fortune 500 um, company contract. And you had just gotten a deal with IBM and you were so excited. And I remember that. And we talked a little bit about, you know, how you, you have played so many great matches and you just, this was the first one big deal that you got. Oh, wow. Yeah, I definitely don't remember that. I have the worst memory, um, <laughs> as you know. But yeah, I think that was so, I think you have such an interesting story to tell for so many people. And I hate to say, I hate to use this word timely, but. Unfortunately, it is a timely story, but for me, it's more of a timeless story. And that's kind of how it has been throughout my career. You know, it's just, it's just timeless. And then Chanda, like you had some amazing moments too, which I think were really influential on me. Um, <laughs> I think I always teased you about the one Yes, you did. I know what you're going to say. I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> you you and Venus. <laughs> you were down like well, I don't know what, what, love. What? she was down yeah, different she's about to say it love, <laughs> five love 40 love and they like, and, they like uh, make it up though <laughs> second third and then you came back for the win <laughs> yeah I, I remember the first time you and Vitas came up to me like at a free show beer like okay we don't believe this story is true you have to tell us did it really happen and I was like, yes, I came back in this match. And, you know, I was down five love, 40 love in the third. And um, it was against Yana Nevada, no rest in peace. But it was it was an incredible moment. But, yeah, they just laugh about it. Like, I, thought, Why I mean, me? without you realizing it, it definitely inspired myself and Venus to, like, say when we're down, like, you know, all the many, many times yeah. I've been down match points. Like, it's moments like that when you realize that someone else can do it, especially someone that looks like you and that, people have never been like this in this sport. It's like, okay, I can do it too. So yeah, it's just been, it's really cool well, as well. You know, it's interesting because I think, you know, inspiration wise, I mean, you obviously, you know, have just raised the bar and, you know, we've played a couple of times in our careers. It was during <laughs> a one year period, but you were having like the best year ever. Uh, you <laughs> go on to win Wimbledon and, and, you know, barely lose a match um, in that particular year. And it's happened time and time again. And, you know, we sort of talk about with Zena not having a clothing contract. I know for me, and you know, you don't have to comment, but for me, having our playing at the same time, our careers overlapping, seeing you, in my opinion, as a black player, have such a winning record, have such a resume, and similar to Zena's story, to not get what I thought was your due, you know, to yeah. have four times the titles but be making half the money off the court. And we talk about this a lot. Yes, on the court, our rackets can do the talking, which is great, but it's off the court where you see the, the discrepancies, the discrepancies, the inequalities. And, you know, that can affect you as a player. That affects your mindset. And, it, you know, it's yeah, kind it of can affect the you idea of feeling it. less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you get you. through that? Well, it can affect you if you it allow you to allow it to affect you. Um, there's some people in the locker room that has been really affected by the way others have been treated, and I've mm -hmm. made it a point early in my career after watching some of those people that I never wanted that negative negativity. Their energy was just so bad, and they were so bitter. And other people had been affected the same way and didn't make a lot of money, but their attitude was just different and just mm -hmm. more happy and their life was happier. And I made a point from then, like, and I didn't even know what was going to happen to me. I just knew that I never wanted to be like some of those people that I saw. Um, and hey. baby, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What baby? Bring her on. She's okay. Oh, okay. Mama, mama's on the phone. Can you go get Papa? Okay. Daddy. Um, so I made that, I made that a point. And also I'm not, if you guys, Zena, you know me probably a little better, but I am not a materialistic kind of individual and I have a very strong spiritual background. I always have. And honestly, all this is temporary. I believe that, um, I believe what the Bible says. And, um, Lex, can, can you, um, thank you. Um, I believe I believe that. I believe what the Bible says and that uh, we are not, there's so much more to life than what you can put in your pockets and what other people have. 
And then, you know, maybe things come full circle if it may be not. But for me, I would never, I'd never forget how, I don't want to say awful, just how angry this person was and just like how heavy and negative. And I was like, I just can't, like, I'll never, ever want to be like her. And I so never we, we can't ask you who that is now. You asked me. <laughs> yeah, you can. Can. you can. You can. But you. I'm going to text you. <laughs> 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 and you guys are probably like, I get it. Oh, I get it. No. Yeah, now, I never want to be like that. Interestingly enough, sir, I know we're going to run out of time here, but I, I have to say, I mean, I believe exactly what you're saying because you did something. I don't know if you remember. The second time we played, this was in, in 2002, the second time we played tournament in, so when, in Los you Angeles. Beat, oh, no, not I in beat LA. You by the, I beat you by the oh. skin of my teeth there. You had killed me at Wimbledon that year oh. and won it and just, I mean, like I said, barely lost a match. I beat you, I think it was like 7-6 in the third. Tough match, <laughs> hard fought, but, you know, and it was the quarters, right? So you're like, I'm yeah, going yeah, to yeah. go on, I'm going to move on. But <laughs> Serena, you the next day, I don't know if you remember this, but my coach Benny, Benny Sims, asked you to warm me up and you warmed me up. And there's not there are not many players that would have done that, that would have first of all stuck around after you know losing and when they're ready to get to the next tournament, but would have warmed that person up and <laughs> you were like fantastic. When Benny says to do something, you gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you saw me, you're like you're like, okay, now go win the tournament. And I said, okay, now I gotta win the tournament. <laughs> but oh, it was yes, incredible. Yes, 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 yes. Jenny told me about four. I said, she did what? She walked it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I can't say I so, you know, I um You wouldn't you do know, that now, I right? Jenny wouldn't <laughs> If you asked me, you know, if someone asked me, it's it's different because, like, I, I, you have to genuinely be happy for people um, as long as you've done your best. You know, and if you know, I oh, I could have done better, I could have done better. But, like, also I would never say no to someone like you, you know, that needed a help, helping in. When I say someone like you, it's someone that's black that needed it. So also would never say no to Benny. Um, but there's a lot of factors in there, but yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, who, that's what you remember, you know, you don't remember maybe title 18, you know, you remember those moments that really impact and make people say like, oh, well, she was more than a champion on the court. And that's what mm -hmm. I always said. I don't really care about my results on the court. For me, it's yeah. more of the stuff that what is what is the purpose of your life and what is that mm -hmm. so that's why a lot of this stuff really genuinely doesn't affect me and when people turns out that people actually are doing drugs it, the truth comes out well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I and always they get caught and then they get banned for not long enough I always see Chandra with her shape, but I think you and Chandra are pretty good. Okay. So I have another question that I, you know, that I, I was always intrigued, and you probably won't remember, but I remember asking you and Venus, like, you know, why were you guys so positive all the time? And both of you guys told me that your mom would always tell you guys almost, almost every day that, you know, you're strong black women, you can do whatever, you know, do you, are you working on instilling that into Olympia right now as well? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, today, that's all I told her today. Ironically enough that you asked that she, I keep telling her to be strong, fall, be hard, be, be tough, you know, and it's important because, um, you know, she's around so many different elements and no one knows what's going to happen to her in the future, what she's going to be around, the, what tests she's going to have to do, what people she has to encounter. And I really do believe it starts at a really young age and, and having that positive reinforcement like, you know, hey, I can do this. You know, hey, I'm strong. Hey, I believe in me. It really starts with believing in yourself. And yeah. um, even if, even if like you don't believe in yourself, it's like mental, like you got the mental coach, like just telling yourself that every day is like, it means something and it does something. And so I think that, uh, having my mom do that. And then again, just being raised the way we were and understanding that life is so short in this career, yeah. although it's been long, it's really short relative to your life. And there's so much more mm -hmm. that are so many more important things in life. As you grow, you get to realize and, um, you have your moments and if you have great moments for a year or two years or 10 years or whatever, 
you know, it's just those moments and doesn't define your whole entire life. Yeah. Well, now, anything to worry about. We saw that Instagram <laughs> post with her ready position. She oh has struggled. Oh my God. <laughs> she got it going no on. Yeah. I teach oh children all the, all the time about Harper and being stubborn, but I think Olympia and Harper can play doubles when they grow up for sure. I yeah, I've never I... seen a ready position in my life like that. Like, I don't know where <laughs> she got it from because it's complete opposite of my ready position. So I'm just well, like. She... She's got it. That's crazy. It was, it was incredible. I mean, it basically broke the internet. So, I mean, we we loved it. Uh, <laughs> we didn't get permission to show it, so we were not going to put it up there on the screen. I know Daddy took the picture, but uh, it was just, it was fantastic. And uh, Serena, I know you've got to get out of here. My, my last kind of question thought Yeah, is, no, I pushed it back for, I pushed my other call, but I'm texting them that I'm going to be late. So I have a few more minutes, but it's up to you. Okay. Well, hey, and I would just we say, love yeah, it. Maybe few more questions and and you can go in and then end on a positive note so yeah uh, well chanda i'll go in with one more and then i'll let you uh, i want to um, ask an olympia one as well so a follow-up okay. yeah okay so so go I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just i want to follow up with this so as a mom okay because you know i i, I get it it's different for everybody but are there is there anything that you sort of have learned as a mom that you maybe didn't think of. You have a strong black mother, but what are some of the things that you've kind of been surprised by being a mom to Olympia? Well, I mean, definitely the connection, the love I have for her. Like it's just, it's unparalleled to any other love that I have for another human being mm -hmm. um, in general. Cause it's just, you know, I love my husband so much, but it's a different kind of love. Mm -hmm. um, it's like also I think because she's so young it's like a protection and she can't do much and like it's my responsibility and my husband's responsibility to protect her so um, I didn't expect to have that and I look at my mom and I'm like oh now I understand why she tells me don't get in the water in the ocean because we're going to drown <laughs> like two years ago no. so you know yes true story so, uh, but now I get, I get some, some, some of that, you know, I, I hope I wouldn't say to my daughter and she's in her yeah. mid thirties, late thirties, but I'm just like, okay, mom. Um, but you know, you, I just also didn't understand like the respect of the different level of respect and love I have for my own mom, mm -hmm. which is like, I didn't expect that. Like I just needed her there and need her more. I rely on her so much more than I ever have like since, since I was a kid, you know, and I just, yeah. there's so much. I also didn't expect all the time. <laughs> like my day is like tennis, baby. And then my day starts at night. Like Chanda, I'll text you yeah. in late hours. <laughs> that's literally when my day starts. That's like my yeah. nine to five. That's starts your at time. Like, yeah. That's, that's my time, time. <laughs> <laughs> after she goes to bed. And it's just like, that's really the, I don't know, especially since I started training, I didn't realize I would have, I would want to put so much time in this relationship with her. So it's, yeah, but I keep going. That's I love fantastic. it. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. the beauty well, of it. The one thing I wanted to, the last thing that I wanted to say, I've been enjoying my time having the opportunity to talk to you during quarantine, um, you know, you, and thanks for taking my call and less talking, but you've really helped me grow. Um, you don't even know some of the things that you just helped me, but the thing I that know, I- have been meaning to get back on the phone with you. It's been so hard. It's, it's training, uh, killing me. We still <laughs> connect, but the one thing that I, has, you know, just, really come up with me. And I remember, um, I don't even know if you remember this, you had a conversation with Taylor and Skyler and one of the first uh, at Charleston. And they were so excited to come and talk to you. But the, it was very interesting because I knew that you weren't just going to talk tennis, but you talked history. And the first question mm. you asked them if they knew their history. And we got back in that car and they was like, she didn't even say anything about tennis. But the thing that I want, would like for you to let our audience know, um, because I've talked to you now, how important it is to know your history and when you're trying to go somewhere. Well, you, so my dad, this is something that I owe to him. You can't know where you're going unless you know your past. Um, until you know what's happened, 
about yourself and about your culture and about you, then you're never going to be, I mean, I don't think you're going to be as good or successful or whatever you want to do as you can. Um, and you have to learn that. So for me, that's what we did. Like once I learned about who my people were, I knew that I could endure so much. Mm -hmm. I knew that only the strong survived only. So I have to be strong. I must be because it's in my DNA. Like, I mean, I have clearly the strong because those are the only ones that survived. So for me, that just, that history helped me in my career and in my life. And I think when you get to know your history, it really helps you deal with a lot of other stuff. So um, that's how I related it back to me. But there's always other ways that you can relate different things. But um, I, and listen, that's what my dad always said. And I was a good kid. I actually always listened to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Olympia is a good kid too. I was like, "Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am." <laughs> yes, I can. I can definitely see that. Now, I'm wondering, with everything kind of going on now in the world, are there some things you've learned about your history, about history that you maybe didn't know? That's kind of you know been more meaningful meaningful to you now. Um. I can't sit here and say no, I have. I've learned, I've done a deep study about African-American history. And in fact, I took courses in college on it because they really sometimes don't give you the, the nitty gritty. And they were very painful courses. And this was years and years and years ago. In fact, I had to come out of one because I just couldn't take it. And then I, you know, eventually I went back, but it was, um, I, I'm more, I'm more or less the person that's saying, nodding their head and like, yeah, well, you didn't know this and that. And just, you know, uh, talking about different facts that they may not have known. I also went to Africa several, like, um, like almost a decade ago was my first trip to Africa. I've been several times, but that was a really important part for me to learn my history. Um, oh. And so I'm a history, like a love history, whether it's African-American history, I love all kinds of history. I just find it really fascinating for whatever reason. But yeah, so I'm definitely more the person that is like, okay, yeah, well, didn't you know that this happened and this happened and this happened? Mm -hmm. And so um, more or less like chiming in and telling facts. And it's fun. There's just a lot of people don't know. You, people, if you don't know, you don't know. And you just have to kind of tell people what happened and why it happened, why things still happen. And, you know, yeah, so... Yeah. Well, one of the questions, and this is the last one, one of the questions that Zena, about, Zena and I have talked about a few times on this show with other guests are the Olympics. You guys got gold medals. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. I'm, I'm wondering, just in the spirit of, you know, sort of USA and, and why you have played in team competitions, what you put into it, this strength you talk about, how, have, how important has the Olympics been and what has that experience been like? Well, in the past, it's been um, a wonderful experience, you know. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I just feel like I've come, <clears throat> as a tennis player, as you know, we live to play Grand Slams. And anything else is just usually you don't think about it. It's like, oh, we have a tournament next week or we have another Grand Slam in yeah. a couple months. So it's, yeah. and that's what we're remembered for. No one really knows how many Grand, how many, uh, Olympic gold medals I may have or may not have. So you've got uh, a lot. You've got a lot. Yeah, now. <laughs> yeah but and like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's it's I'm not the first you. thing. <laughs> it's the first you. thing people I, say. So yeah, it's been a really interesting sometimes experience. It is. Sometimes yeah? it is. now you, I don't know if you know remember, but I played doubles with Venus mm -hmm. at the Olympics. And probably at, one of the few times she's played with anyone other than you. And I've been on that side of the court with you too. I was feeling really bad about myself. I'm like, I'm not Serena here, but <laughs> Smash. Smash. Her mother and me were having nightmares up there yeah. watching you guys play too. <laughs> and we were, we were like right there. We ended up losing to the team that won the gold medal that year. And oh, I kind yeah. of felt bad because we were so close and Venus was phenomenal. I, I'll tell this story and, and kind of in there, but I, I could not believe the athlete that Venus was. We had one point that they hit down my line. The point was over. I mean, it, for normal people, the point is over. Like there's no way she's at the baseline way on the other side of the court. I go, I turn around and say, oh, 
good shot. Venus was going to have the next point. She's still running and tracking down that ball. She gets it back. The point's still going. I've got to reset and keep playing. I think we ended up winning that point, but it was ridiculous. You know, yeah. just the difference playing She's with her great. versus any She's... other partner. <laughs> I play with. Yeah. I'm jealous now that you got to play with her your whole career. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a real cheat. It's been a real cheat sheet, so that's why we were like, two powerhouses that practice doubles, you know, that, and it helped our singles game, I think for sure. And definitely mentally, like, so you're not so nervous in some instances and, you know, it's like, okay, this is semifinals of doubles. And then you're in the semifinals of singles. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, So yeah, it was, I love playing doubles. I really do. Yeah. Well, that's the strength you guys have both shown and, you know, I wouldn't want to live on the difference. You're talking about you have a cheat. I think, you know, she's got yeah, one exactly. too. So you got you yeah. guys have been, been playing. Well, well my <laughs> Olympics, my Olympics with, with them will always be their first one that they won in Sydney. Um, that was just amazing to watch you guys win your first one. It was so awesome. That was so fun because yeah. I didn't have to play singles. Like I was like 10 in the world at the time and I didn't qualify. <laughs> I think every Amer- every player that was top was American at that time, yeah, and I, I was I didn't qualify, and we ended up playing doubles, and it was crazy. I was like, man, but we won, and it was good, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I remember so running second. down there to tell you guys, make sure you don't drape the bag over you. Just make sure you show it. And I remember the next. And oh, I remember. The next, I remember the next. that. I remember also telling you guys that winning this this goal will help you. I said Tiger Woods will is going to make all this money, but this is going to put you guys right in there. And I got off the plane and I saw the USA Today cover, and that's still one of my favorite pictures with the flag behind you and Venus, and you guys look so happy. Oh wow, that's fantastic! What a what a memory. Those were, those were the old days. Those were the old days, and now <laughs> you know new memories. New memories. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank Fantastic. you so much, Serena. This has been thank so you. much fun. Yes. Thank and you. And thank Congrats you. Congrats on thank 30 you years. Sharing. I see you have that uh, tequila and stuff behind you. So <laughs> you can really take that to the head. <laughs> a, I'm not even a big drinker. I must 30 tell seconds. you. I'm Minimum of 30 seconds. Like One second per year. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you would notice that, but okay. <laughs> yes, I, I'm wondering how you. We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait, that. and we'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you so much, Sarita, for joining us, for sharing your thoughts and your memories as well. This has been a lot of fun. Um, thank you, guys, for watching. It's, it's been thank another you. fantastic episode. 